Hello everybody and welcome to another uh, Inkscape developer update. My name is Martin, I'm an Inkscape developer, um, hope, hoping to develop fixes and features um, in the name of Inkscape users. Um, welcome to my update. This week I basically worked on connectors a bunch more. So before I get into the details, uh, let me give a big shout out and a big thank, thank you to all of my Patreons um, and my sponsored contractor. Thank you very much, everybody, for helping me continue this work. Um, I'm hoping to grow the sponsorship this year. Um, we're about halfway through the year. Um, so please do share and um, pass along these videos and my Patreon link to any company especially who might be interested to help me um, get to the level where I can make this sustainable. Um, okay, so what do we get up to this week? Uh, as I said last week, I was going to work on the connectors tool, especially when it comes to the, the little jumps and various other um, features. Um, but I actually got stuck at the start of the week because I wanted to do some code cleanup, you know, make things tidier, make things more maintainable. And uh, there was this like weird crash that kept happening every time um, you would to, like try and make knots appear, these little, little nodes that appear when you when you edit objects. And it was just like, oh, this shape doesn't exist. <clears throat> So I can't place a knot on the screen because like the curve that it's supposed to sit on, it, it's not there. And it was crashing and I spent days just like picking through Inkscape code, learning about like how curves or like how the memory is managed, uh, C++ memory management schemes, like all sorts of deep problems. And um, yeah, I, nothing to do with any of that. Turns out that uh, when you create a knot, the initialization happens after the creation of the not object. So you can't do anything until that second initialization is complete, which is really dumb. Like as an API, that's not good. You're, you're supposed to make sure that your objects have all of the context that they need when you create them, right? And you're not supposed to create like a half dangling objects that technically don't contain enough information uh, like they don't contain valid objects enough to actually make them relevant so as soon as you know what i actually passed this over to other developers because it was so frustrating i i asked in the developer me meeting and uh eventually my cov looked at the code <laughs> tried to look at the same memory problems because it seemed like an interesting problem to him and when he came back to me and said this doesn't look initialized i was like oh it's absolutely right. It wasn't initialized. And if I had saw that two days earlier, it would have saved me an awful lot of time. Admittedly, I wouldn't have learned quite so much about curves and memory management and so on and so on. But at the same time, still frustrating. So uh, yeah, did a bunch of code cleanup, managed to solve those issues. Um, I added selection so that when you have, when you either select the line or you select the objects, uh, all of the lines and connected lines of objects you've selected are have all the nodes available so you can start editing them. So say if you have an object with three lines that are connected to it and you select that object, all three of those lines will be editable in the in the connectors tool. Uh, which should make it easier to just uh, you know manage those lines. Uh, I joined up a lot of the settings from the from the connectors toolbar so you can uh, connect together all of the uh, curvature and, and node types and sizes and various other things so that people who try this feature out today should be able to at least change the settings more more easily. Um, I want you to break it and let me know how it's broken because uh, I, I want to try and start f finishing this a little bit although it may take a while actually. Um, you can change the the connect, connection of an existing line now. So uh, you you click on a node, and you literally put it somewhere else. And this is this is actually very nice. Like it, it draws a new a new skeleton line as you go, um, connects it up in the way that you might expect. It, look, it, it looks really nice. Um, there was also a bunch of other node uh, juggling to make sure like the uh, selected line nodes didn't interfere with the with the hovering nodes because you don't want nodes sitting on top of each other because then you you can't which one are you clicking on um 
I added the ability for you to move around the checkpoints. So you'll see that there's the mid the midpoints that you can move around now. You could technically move them around before using the node tool. Uh, you can't do that anymore. It has to be done through through, through the connectors tool. Um, simply because the line the, the paths are different. You know they they're rooted. Um, I added line jumping. This actually took uh, quite a while because I had to f figure out how to do the mathematics for this creates little gaps between the lines as they're rooting, and then where it sees a gap, it can either draw a little arc around them, or it can just leave a gap. Uh, it's still not 100% complete. Uh, there are bugs. For example, when you move the, the connector around, the, the size of the jump changes. I mean, it just shrinks and grows as the, like, as the amount of uh, line before and after the jump change. I have no idea why it's doing that. It'll probably be something stupid, so that needs to be fixed. Um, that brings me on to what I'll be doing next week. So I'll be trying to fix as many bugs as possible, so please let me know uh, if you find issues. Uh, I'll also be work working on the node creation. Uh, this is the point, like the sub-points. You can create custom points when you basically create a group of things, and then you want to create a clone or stuff, stuff like that. Um, and doing as much cleaning as I can to kind of finish off this this project. Um, there's a bunch of other stuff that happened in the Skit world this week, uh, but it's, I don't know. Let me know. Um, and thank you all very much for, for listening. Uh, let me know how you're getting on with Inkscape 1.1. It's looking nice. We're getting some good feed feedback. Uh, it's still slow on Mac. Sorry about that. Um, I'm still looking into the multi-page support. I really want to do, do that for this summertime. Um, please do let me know if you if you're interested in sponsoring that work because it's something that I think the project needs, but also I think it's what a lot of users wouldn't want. Um, I've been pushing CMYK inside the Inkscape project itself. I think not for me to do, but like for the project to do. I'm going to keep trying to do do, do that because I think that's also going to be important. Um, and a bunch of community stuff. Uh, so thank you again. And I will see you all next week.